This is Marshall Jones. I'm the managing editor of infonews.ca. I'm with Levi Landry, our Kamloops reporter. Uh, Levi, uh, today a tow truck showed up at the mayor's used car business and uh, took a car away from his lot uh, by order of the city. Um, what's going on here? Can you give us a bit of background to this? Well, yeah, not only was it uh, a car on the at the mayor's business um, that might have been for sale at one point, but it's also an SUV that was torched twice in uh, in about a year. Um, so that SUV has been there burned since uh, shortly after the election in 2022. The following October, just a couple of months ago, it was burned again. Uh, lit on fire so now the city is asking and it's just been sitting on the mayor's used car lot he's got no other vehicles on this lot just the one vehicle and this is rather prominent it's sort of a front is it it's uh it's a little bit tucked away but it's pretty it's pretty easy to find you, you just glance over from the street and you can see it um so in recent weeks um it uh sort of attracted a little bit of graffiti on it um, some plywood, cardboard stacked on top. There was a sleeping bag inside. Uh, so somebody's been making camp in there. And the mayor's refused to move it. Uh, he continues to suggest possibly he could sell it for parts. So it hasn't moved. So just take me through the process here, though. So the uh, the car was burned first uh, like a year ago, and then it was burned again in October, I think he said. Um, and it's just been sitting there ever since. Why has the mayor just been leaving it there? He, uh, he said uh, he's hoping to maybe sell it for parts, but is there more to this perhaps, do you think? It seems that there's probably more to it. Uh, he hasn't said it to me, but he said it to uh, to other people that I've spoken with that uh, he's making a point with the SUV by leaving it there. The point being, you know, the same thing he's been talking about since before the election, that his where his business is located on West Victoria, they have all sorts of homelessness issues, graffiti, vandalism, all this sort of thing. Do you think that's the point he's trying to state, which is like, here's a burned out car. This is the neighborhood you're allowing to uh, fester here. Is that that kind of a thing or, or are we just guessing here? I, I think that's the exact situation that's exactly what he's trying to say okay by leaving the scb there okay so uh how did this uh, why now why is this all coming up now well the fire chief gave him a 48 hour order earlier this week or well rather a, a fire order uh, deeming the scb a hazard and with a 48 hour deadline to have that scb towed off the property hammer jackson uh refused to move it. He said it wasn't going to happen. Um, he said he has too many total out vehicles on his personal property at home already, uh, so he's not going to move another one. So the vehicle sat there, uh, but it came after uh, multiple complaints to the bylaw department. Uh, that's what Fire Chief Ken Uzula had told me. Uh, so it came to a head with the fire order. He deemed it as a fire chief, he deemed it a fire hazard uh, to leave that vehicle there and said that uh, it should be moved. Okay. So, um, I mean, we, we've spent a lot of time on this story uh, this week. Uh, you've been out there a couple of times to see what's going on, speak to the neighbors, that sort of thing. Um, uh, like, this has got to be already competing for one of the silliest Kamloops stories we've seen this year. Uh, tied with a number of other silly Kamloops stories involving Reed Hammer Jackson and council. Is this, is this part of this, uh, this uh, fractious council that you have Reed Hammer Jackson versus the other councillors? Is this, is this, a, is that part of a, the background context for this or is the, is this just separate incidents? I think it's impossible to separate. Uh, if you ask um, councillors, they'll likely say no. Uh, one such counselor, uh, Dale Bass, she did. She said that it's um, it's it's not related. Uh, but uh, if you ask Reed, he'll say yes. And I think to any reader um, paying attention, uh, they will notice um, that it it likely is it it all falls in together. Uh, this 
vehicle being towed um, comes after a uh, neighbor of Reed's, um, of uh, Reed Hamer Jackson, the business next to him, Stereo Warehouse, uh, the owners had sent their complaints to city council. Um, they've done so many times, um, but this time they sent a letter uh, with numerous issues that they've been having on that street, being graffiti, vandalism, uh, crime, um, drug use, um, a bunch of issues that they, they've been having. So they wrote to um, council, and what did council say? Well, one of the examples they used was this vehicle on Hamer Jackson's lot is attracting some attention and there's been some fires nearby. Uh, Dale Bass responded um, as deputy mayor for the month. Uh, she suggested, based on a recommendation from staff, she later told me, um, suggested that the owners of Stereo Warehouse can complain about that vehicle and have it towed. Right, and it's fairly standard process, right? Like uh, bylaw departments at any city, they don't tend to do anything unless they have a formal complaint. That's typically how it works. They work on a complaints basis. But in this case, uh, the owners of Stereo Warehouse said uh, they weren't going to do so. They weren't going to do that. They're not going to complain. Um, and they felt that they were being pulled into the internal strife in City Hall. Um, Dale Bass, as I said, to, she told me it's that's not where the recommendation came from. It came from uh, Deputy Chief Administrative Officer Byron McCorkle, who made that recommendation, and she simply forwarded that to Stereo Warehouse owners um, to make that complaint. Mm. And the fact that this uh, the vehicle was towed while the mayor is uh, on a flight to uh, Mexico, is that also a, just a coincidence? Well, maybe it's a coincidence. Um, it's a bad timing for the mayor either way, because he'll have to pay for uh, not only the tow, but how long it remains in storage. Uh, so it's likely that bill will keep adding up. You know, they say uh, a perception of a conflict of interest is just as bad as a conflict of interest. Is that kind of what's going on here? Like, you know, this battle between council and the mayor is just dragging all these other people in, regardless of whether they're uh, legitimate issues or not. It just feels like everything they touch is just going to get tarred with this same icky mess. That's sort of what I'm seeing. And that's what you hear from readers many times when, uh, you know, when a headline comes out about Reed Haber Jackson with the latest episode. Um, his supporters continue to blame city council because uh, they're perceived as always against him. And the opposite is true for people who don't so much support Reed Haber Jackson. <laughs> so it'll, it, it, whether perception or not, uh, that, that will continue. And such is the state of political discourse in 2023. And uh, how many years left? In this council? Oh, three got, more years. We got three more years. All right. Okay. Thanks, Levi. I'll let you uh, return to Mayor's phone call uh, from Mexico on this. Thank you.